Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications, and check out the latest items in the Dark Web Deacon merch store. There is a link in the video description below, and become a true Dark Web enthusiast. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday. Tech companies and tech-savvy countries around the world are racing to bring quantum computers into practical use for military and business advantages. The simplest definition of quantum computers is this. Quantum computers are machines that use the properties of quantum physics to store data and perform computations. This can be extremely advantageous for certain tasks where you could vastly outperform even our best supercomputers today. Today's computers use bits, a stream of electrical or optical pulses representing ones or zeros. Everything from your tweets and emails to your iTunes songs and YouTube videos are essentially long strings of these binary digits. Qubit, or quantum bit, is the basic unit of quantum information, which are typically subatomic particles such as electrons or protons. To be clear, quantum computers don't use transistors but subatomic particles to perform calculations and store information. If you want to learn more about the basics of quantum computing, check out my previous video, What is Quantum Computing? Simply Explained. Quantum computing will be a powerful tool for breaking data encryption. Instead of trying one combination at a time sequentially as a modern computer does, the quantum computer can try a very large number of these at the same time. Experts suggest that a computer with 2,000 to 4,000 qubits would be enough to defeat conventional strong encryption standards within a reasonable amount of time. A constant in computing is that things get smaller, faster, and cheaper. But for now, quantum computing is still large, expensive, and unstable. The code breaking in question revolves around encrypting data that often uses trapdoor mathematical functions that work easily in one direction, but not in the other, like a trapdoor. That makes encrypting data easy, but decoding it hugely difficult without the help of special keys. Trapdoor functions are based on the process of multiplication, which is easy to perform in one direction, but much harder to do in reverse. For example, it is trivial to multiply two numbers together, like five times seven, which is 35. But it is harder to start with the number 35 and quickly work out which two prime numbers must be multiplied to produce 35. And it becomes increasingly difficult even for computers as the numbers get really, really big. So, think of trying to break encryption with modern computers like the average person trying to bike up Mount Everest if a bike path existed. It would be hard and long and nearly impossible. While quantum computers in the same scenario would be like trying to bike up Mount Everest along the bike path, but instead of a bike, you have a high-end motorcycle. While there may not be an immediate danger of sensitive data being breached by someone with quantum computing technology, threat will arrive nonetheless and is inevitable. So eventually, companies and governments around the world will need to encrypt their data with quantum technology to protect against quantum attacks. But in the meantime, there are things that can be done in the conventional world. Some in the security industry are gearing up to upgrade standards to protect against quantum attacks. But there are a couple of conventional methods available to protect against this threat right now in case a foreign power makes advances and attempts a surprise at quantum attack on our financial systems. To face this threat, organizations can adopt comprehensive approaches to protecting data on their servers, including proper management of encryption keys, including hierarchical keys to enable key rotation. Think of this like changing the locks on your house often and keeping only a few secure copies of house keys that only a limited number of people have access to. Also, applying firewall-like rules for data access and restricting access by user ID. This is like putting up a high-end fence around your house that requires some type of ID to gain access to. And finally, reporting any unauthorized or suspicious attempts to access data. 
This is like having a security camera around your house, both inside and out, to alert you of any suspicious activity. Regular use of quantum mechanics in computing is still far from common. But according to a recent report from the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine, companies need to speed up preparations for the time when quantum technology can crack conventional defenses to protect you, the consumer. The country that weaponizes quantum computing first will rule the world. And I have a video on this topic if you would like to delve further into this idea with me more. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.